isn't just mine. His or her house. This is our house. Hello, everyone. My name is Tyrone Lowe. This is my show, The Legends. I want to thank everybody that subscribes to my show that shows me love all over the world. And um, I thank you guys. I love you guys to death. On, on my show, The Legends, I have somebody that's been around for a very long time. He's been associated with Motown. He has actually uh, played with artists like Smokey Robinson, Gladys Knights. His, the list is phenomenal. And I give you today on The Legends, Tony Newton. How you doing, Tony? Hey, how you doing? Great. You know, um, it's, 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 it's very uh, amazing, you know, to know that at the age of uh, seven, you started playing, you know, professionally at the age of, uh, you know, seven. Now, you started doing it. No, no, age. no. I started playing professionally at 14. Oh, okay, okay. Well, <laughs> I, I, I was playing right. when I was six or seven, though. So how was it growing up as a child? Was it? Was okay. It just... So uh, what happened was I had a neighbor that had a piano okay. uh, in, in, back across from us. So I used to go over there and play the piano. Mm -hmm. And uh, but my folks couldn't afford a piano. So uh, in school, when I started elementary, well, right. I was first in the choir. Mm -hmm. and, and back in the, in those days, they would give you the instruments uh, to take home. Right. So uh, that's when I started playing uh, other instruments, right? Mm -hmm. And then I played in orchestras and, and uh, orchestral bands all through elementary, junior high, oh. and high. Yeah. So apparently, um, you know, what influenced you at that, at that early age? Um, well, I tell everybody I'm uh, classically trained and street trained. Right. <laughs> right. So, I mean, during those days, it was, um, well, on the radio, it was like the Blind Boys and uh, Little Richard, you, you hear Elvis, and right. um, also like Ray Charles to listen to some country music mm -hmm. uh, because I love the uh, stories in the songs, right? right. And so uh, I'm a firm believer in um, listening to all kinds of music. It's like mm -hmm. food, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so I eat all kinds, right? Because I learn and uh, gain more insight from listening to all different types of music, right? Yeah, so, and so you actually started playing the bass, and that's what, that's your, that's actually became like your true love, you know? Yeah, or, what happened uh, was um, I was playing saxophone. What uh, My first concert, big concert, was we opened a show for uh, Nina Simone. Okay. Uh, in Detroit at the Masonic uh, Temple. Right. Uh, then... Um, I moved on and um, I saw I was playing saxophone with John Lee Hooker when okay. the Motown people found me. Right. Okay. And, uh, but I was at that time, I was playing both saxophone and bass. Okay. And so, because when I started, there wasn't that many black uh, electric bass players. Right. So I loved the instrument so much, I wanted in on it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I gave up my saxophone uh, uh, to play bass, right. but I've come back full circle on the piano. No. <laughs> I haven't touched the the saxophone, but I I went back to college and mm -hmm. uh, got my degree in piano and theory and composition. Okay, so the Motown Review. I mean, how was it to actually be on the stage with Smokey Gladys and all these? real good artists you know back in the days i mean i know i mean i mean the trend probably was different then to now you know but oh no doubt <laughs> let's talk about 
the trend itself, the vibe itself? Well, you know, in the 60s, that's when radio and music was really exploding. Right. Um, uh, because uh, records and vinyl records and all that type of thing, mm-hmm. as well as you'd hear tons and tons of music on the radio, be it from uh, Wolfman Jack to down right. south to wherever, right? And so it was, I think it was quite the the time for music in the 60s because right. you could hear all types of music. Right. Um from from blues to Motown to rock to pop, everything was going on, and it was just an uh, amazing time. And uh, my first gig was a tour with Motown. Right. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. I took uh, James Jameson. Well, I, I played, I took James Jameson's place. He was the, the Motown bass player that right. played on everything. So mm-hmm. he was working with Smokey. Mm-hmm. So I took his place, and then one of the first gigs was the tour to uh, England mm-hmm. and throughout England. And so that was with the actual Motown review. Right. And uh, that's on um, YouTube. It's uh, mm-hmm. Motown uh, RSG 1965. It means right. Motown Ready, Steady, Go 1965. It was a uh, uh, Dusty Springfield show. Mm-hmm. And, and, Everybody's there, Smoke Age, the Supremes, right. uh, Temptations, Stevie, mm-hmm. uh, uh, everybody's there. Everybody. Okay. Yeah, right. And so we did a 30 day tour mm-hmm. and we finished up in uh, Paris at the Olympia. And uh, that is, that was recorded, just the Motown Review mm-hmm. at the Olympia. And so, uh, it was quite an experience because I had never been on a tour at that okay. point. Right? I mean, I had done I'd gone out of town with some of the blues artists, but I'd never done a tour, mm-hmm. and so uh, it was it was quite exciting. But I was taking everything in stride, right? right. Uh, because you, you have to keep your focus so you can do a good job. You can't, exactly. You, can't you know. Get- yeah, what b- actually blew me away was your affiliation with the Mamas and the Papas. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now that happened. Mm-hmm. What happened was Detroit was drying up in the mm-hmm. seventies. Uh, all the, I mean, because originally there was damn near a studio on right. every corner, mm-hmm. right? And clubs that's about the same. So there's plenty music happening. But mm-hmm. then it started to dry up after. Uh, the auto industry shut down. Okay. And, and so I could see the future coming. So I moved to California. Okay. So when I moved to California, um, I started playing for Motown as well as other acts. Right. Because they wanted the Detroit sound. Mm-hmm. And, and so um, that's how I was able to get the gig with uh, the Mamas and Papas and play on their last album, right? Mm-hmm. Uh in fact, on the session, they let damn near let me play it, what I wanted. <laughs> right. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, and that that sort of like blew me away because I'm like the mamas and the papas, you yeah. know. Um, you didn't have you ever done anything with the Funk Brothers? Oh yeah, I'm touring with the Funk Brothers. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I was still touring with the Funk Brothers up to uh, you know I'd say three or four years ago. Right. Um. But yes, I toured with the Funk Brothers, Jack Ashford's Funk Brothers. Okay. So the Motown sound to you, was it just a sound that was actually unique, that was actually received by the public, or was it just a sound that was just really unique that uh, that everybody just loved at that time? I think it was a, 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 it was a combination of both, mm-hmm. right? The sound was unique. It had a signature sound, right? and, and people loved the groove on all of the songs and they were well uh, extremely well written mm-hmm. and produced uh music and songs mm-hmm. uh so that's why it rose to the top of the uh, you know the top of the uh, the crowd right right because it was so well done and it had a unique and distinctive sound um and all that made the difference and to make it a hit that it was, right? With all of the artists, 
Mm-hmm. And uh, if because all of the artists were very strong, right. all the producers, all of the writers. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, when I met Smokey, it was a phenomena. <laughs> I can imagine. I mean, to have Smokey stuff. Robinson to be in the studio with Smokey Robinson, come on, right. man, you know, right? And he's a brilliant writer at that. Oh, uh, it's, to this day, it's like Smokey the top of the is list still of the Motown, uh, yeah. segment, you know, yes, yes. I guess that's why he was vice president, right? <laughs> right, definitely, yeah. <laughs> uh, my he was, question he was to you, friends Tony. with Barry, but right, yeah, his talent is is phenomenal in, right. in every respect, right? Mm-hmm. As a vocalist, uh, and as a writer, and as a producer, mm-hmm. and it's been happening all these years, right? Right. <laughs> He's never stopped, right? It's, it's truly amazing. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to take a little break right now and we're going okay. to we're going to listen to Tony's uh, some of Tony's music. And um, I hope you guys enjoy it. Still support him because he goes way back and he's still here. And that's a very good thing. So um, we'll be right back. This is our house. We got some fun people in the house tonight.
it's really down, really down. Playing the games you do someday, someday. Hey, everything will be alright. Yeah. I know that different people make the world go round. my side, the world will be mine, you're the one for me. And we're back. My name is Tyrone Lowe. This is my show, The Legends, and I have the legendary Tony Newton on the set. And um, what's going on, Tony? Hi. You know, you mentioned I'm still around. Uh you know, I, I shouldn't be here, really, because I was diagnosed with double stage four cancer two years ago. Okay. Cancer of the pancreas and cancer of the prostate. Mm -hmm. And my original doctor was not taking care of me. And I, I, really? found, I, I fired him. And then I got some new doctors. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, I'm up shit's creek without a paddle. <laughs> right? Oh, wow. <laughs> and so... But I was lucky that I got Eddie Van Halen's doctor, uh, okay. Dr. Anton Bilchik. Okay. And uh, they got me all straight. And um, Wow, that's, that's incredible. I'm back, right? You know, we have to thank God for that, man. <laughs> yes, that's, exactly. We, know, uh, um, I truly thank God. <laughs> you know, um, I'm going to take it back a little bit. Now, Tori, back in the beginning, um, I know that a lot of Motown artists were actually touring by bus. Yes. And um, there was some type of discrimination as far as racial features. You yes. know, do you want to um, can you tell the viewers about some of that? Well, um, you know, for the most part, in the 60s, it was still a lot of racism, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the South. So whenever we did uh, Motown bus tours and we go down south, that's when we would experience the racism. Right. Uh we didn't, I mean, there's racism in Detroit, mm -hmm. but you didn't experience it unless you went outside of Detroit, <laughs> right? Oh, okay. And, and so, but uh, Michigan itself was Michigan and Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, Ohio, and Illinois. Right. They were all good, right? Uh, I mean, the racism was kind of uh, under the water, right, more or less. It still existed, uh, but it wasn't as bad as it was down south. Okay. So my question to you, Tony, is how you actually made a transition from the Motown sound into a more rock orientated type of um, sound. You okay. Know, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So Detroit is not only known for Motown music, mm -hmm. it's also known for rock artists. Uh, right like Bob Seger, uh, Ted Nugent, mm -hmm. uh, Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels. So when I wasn't working with Motown artists, I was working with rock people. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like the energy and the creative freedom of the rock. Right. So that's why still to this day, um, well, I used to call my music uh, funk rock fusion. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just going with fusion. Right. <laughs> right? Uh, I am one of the creators of jazz rock fusion. Mm -hmm. And so I've just put them all together and called it fusion uh, mm -hmm. because, okay, let's look at it this way. Rock is the high energy aspect. It's funk based, mm -hmm. but uh, the rock is the high energy aspect of it. And the instrumental, because we do both songs right. and instrumentals, and that's the fusion aspect of it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, your bass style is phenomenal. Um, oh, thank you. I'm a bass head. <laughs> you oh, know, okay. I love the bass. <laughs> um, and, you know, I look at that. I like heavy bass like like Grover Washington, Mr. Magic, that yes. sort of like emphasized type of bass line. You yes. know, um, 
And so you formed your own band over the years. You want to talk about some of that? Yes. Um, well, when I, um, after Motown, I went with Holland and Dozier when they left Motown. Okay. All uh, right. right. And form Invictus Hot Wax Records. Mm -hmm. And so I played on mostly everything that came out of uh, HDH. Right. And so they asked me to put together the group the eighth day. Now, when I was with uh, the Smokey and the Miracles, mm -hmm. I had started already opening for them, opening the shows for them, okay. right? Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, Holland Dozier left, and I thought it was a good thing for me to do uh, mm -hmm. because I'd be the main person uh, right. playing on all their stuff. So. Right. Uh, they asked me to put the group together the eighth day, and, and from that day on, I've always had my own group, right? You know, um, working with Aretha Franklin, that must have been really, really uh, something that was really, really epic. Well, what you don't know mm -hmm. is that, and, and this is a, a, a real, it, it's a magical, miracle moment. Okay. Uh, and sometimes it, it's happened to me two or three times, mm -hmm. uh, whereas somebody died, like her bass player died mm -hmm. before she, uh, her bass player's father died mm -hmm. before they was doing Carnegie Hall. Oh, okay. And, and so they called me three days before the gig, mm -hmm. right? Because he had to go to the funeral. Right. It, right. And so. That was my first gig with her, mm -hmm. uh, playing uh, at Carnegie Hall. Mm -hmm. And then I did the record, uh, You, okay. right? And so it was, uh, you know, I, I love working with all of these various. I mean, uh, that's, 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 like, that's like a dream. Yes. You know, being in the, in the studio with the young Michael Jackson, Smokey. Y yes, um, right. You right. know, all these people that actually formulated Motown. Yes. You know? yes. So my question to you, Tony, is, you know, they have a lot of upcoming artists coming out right now um, that's really trying to really lift themselves up in the craft. So do you have any words of wisdom that you can actually suggest to them? Brandon? Definitely. Okay. Don't try to follow a trend. Be yourself and do the best you can because then the music becomes timeless. It's not following a trend that's not going to last and uh, and you will be a, a greater artist mm -hmm. for sticking to that path because right. you will go deeper and deeper into yourself. The universe and God's going to open up a way for you to express your gifts and talents mm -hmm. that he bestowed upon you and they will mean a lot more so what i'm saying is mm -hmm. be totally dedicated be disciplined uh, enough to practice your craft right and also study uh, my thing is all my students i tell them behind every great person is a great teacher True. so mm -hmm. get a good teacher a great teacher Mm -hmm. And you will be great because the greatness is only passed on, right? <laughs> right, from right. one person to another because they share their secrets with you, right. and so that you it would take you 10, 15 years to learn, right? Whereas they give you the shortcuts, and uh, they think you're worthy, or else they wouldn't tell you in the first place, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so. I, uh, you know, being dedicated, uh, disciplined, mm -hmm. passionate, and uh, and just express your talents, and don't right. care, don't 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 let anybody tell you what to do. You have to know what to do in order to be yourself. Like, right. like what we're talking about, all those Motown acts, they were all unique and uh, of uh, in of of themselves, right? Right. Mm -hmm. because they followed these rules that we're talking about. Okay. Right? Well, you know what, Tony? It's been a pleasure. I mean, I am really honored to have you on my show. Uh, thank you for being very informative to my viewers. And I'd like you to come again. 
Oh, you know, that would uh, be my pleasure, and, and thank you so much for uh, having me on. I really and, appreciate you. And this has been another T Love Video production, and you guys tune in for another episode of my show, The Legends. Thank you, guys. Tony, thank you. I tell, watch out for my movie, Mars Quest. Okay, most <laughs> definitely. Okay, all right. You take care. Okay. My love. It's not just mine, it's all her house. This is our house. We got some fun people in the house tonight. Just mine, his or her house. This is our house.